Hi, welcome to this next video for um, the first topic in Year 11 Chemistry. Uh, this one's going to be looking at subtopic 1.2a, which is atomic structure. So, first thing you need to understand is what an atom is. So, an atom is the smallest possible component that makes up a chemical element. It's made up of two main parts, which is the nucleus, which is the heart of the atom. Right? That's what contains the protons and neutrons in there. And then we've got what we call these electron shells, which circle around the outside. Okay, so the nucleus is where the mass of an atom is. It contains protons, which have a positive charge and a relative mass of one. Now, that doesn't mean they weigh one gram or anything like that. It's just we're talking about when we say relative mass, it obviously has to be relative to something else. So what this means is that protons, which have a relative mass of one, weigh the same as a neutron, which has a relative mass of one. So the mass of a proton and a neutron are the same. Okay, a neutron has no charge. That's why it's called neutron from the word neutral. Okay. The electron shells around the outside, okay, they are negatively charged. They hold the electrons in there. Now, <clears throat> the electrons, while they have a negative charge and a proton has a positive charge, electrons have a much lower mass. So they have a mass of, of 1, 1 over 1,840 when compared to a proton. So when we're looking at the mass of an atom, all the mass basically comes from the nucleus, where the neutrons and protons are. Okay, the electrons don't add to the mass at all. However, the electrons are really important because those um, electrons are what determine the chemical reactivity of an element, all right? And they're very important in chemical reactions. So an atom is made up of a nucleus, which contains protons and neutrons, and electron shells, which contain electrons. Protons have a positive charge and a relative mass of one. Neutrons have a no charge and a relative mass of one. Electrons are negatively charged and they have a relative mass of 1 over 1840. So, the periodic table, when you're looking at periodic table, you might have noticed some numbers on there, right? a smaller number and a bigger number. You'll notice that every atom as you go across the periodic table increases by 1. That's what's called the atomic number. So, that atomic number tells us the number of protons in the nucleus. So, every atom differs all right, in terms of the number of protons it has in the nucleus. It also tells us how many electrons a neutrally charged element has. So by that, I mean, if you're just looking at a sodium atom by itself, you're going to have 11 protons and 11 neutrons, so it has no charge. That's what we call a neutrally charged element. All the elements in the periodic table are arranged based on their increasing atomic number. All right, but you'll also notice there's another number on the, on the periodic table when you're looking at the element as well. So that was the atomic number. Here we're going to look at this one and what that means for sodium. So this is actually the mass number. This tells us the number of protons and neutrons in the nucleus. So what you've got to do all right, is subtract the atomic number, all right, so 22, uh, atomic number here, 11, from the mass number of 22.99. So when you work out the difference between those two, and then you round it, either round, this, in this case it's rounding up, but you might have to round down, that tells you the number of neutrons you have. Okay? Now, in a minute I'll explain why these are not whole numbers, okay? but generally if you want to work out the number of neutrons, you just take away the atomic number here from the mass number. Okay? <clears throat> the mass number is really important because we use that when we're doing calculations in chemistry. Right, and um, I'll, we'll get into that a little bit later in this topic. But there's generally more neutrons in the um, in the nucleus than there are protons. That just helps to make atoms stable and absorb some of the energy, overcomes the um, electrostatic um, charges that occur between the positive protons in there. <clears throat> Isotopes are what um, we call atoms with the same number of protons but a different number of neutrons. Okay. So here we've got an example of lithium, and there's actually three different isotopes. Okay, so in the first one here, we've got three protons, three neutrons, three electrons. Okay, so if you're looking at here, the atomic number is three, so that gives us three protons. The mass number is six, so six takes three, gives us three neutrons. But over here in this isotope of lithium, all right, we've still got an atomic number of three, so we've still got three neutrons. But now the mass number is seven, so seven take three gives us four neutrons there. Here, similarly, in 8 and 3 lithium, we now have 5 neutrons, still 3 protons. So same atomic number, which means same number of protons, but different number of neutrons. So isotopes are the reason why our mass numbers on the periodic table are not whole numbers. Now, the important thing to understand about isotopes is that they have the same chemical properties, all right? Because chemical properties are determined by the number of electrons in, um, here, 
in the outer shell. So each of these lithium has one electron in its outer shell, okay, here. So it's going to have the same chemical properties, but they have different physical properties simply because they've got different masses. So to calculate the mass number, all right, if we have different isotopes of elements, and pretty much all elements have um, isotopes, there's a different percentage of those that exist in the world. So I'm just going to move my video out of the way here for a sec so you can see what's down the bottom here. Written. Okay. So this is what's called a mass spectrometer. All right. So these are generally quite big. All right. They take up um, whole rooms by themselves. Um, they're starting to get smaller these days, though. Um, that, and they separate different atoms based on their differences in mass. So what they do is you pass your sample here through um, an electron beam, okay, and then you have a magnet here. And what that will do is that creates a magnetic field which will um, cause the um, atoms to deflect um, based upon how heavy they are, okay. So the lightest atoms will bend the most, and so then you get a detector here. And so obviously as you're looking at this, they will strike the detector at different times, and so it will allow you to work out how much you have of each element. So here we can see something for strontium. We can see that for strontium, we had something with a mass number of 84, a mass number of 86, mass number of 87, but the biggest amount was 88. That's why if you look on the periodic table, your mass number for um, strontium is pretty close to 88 because most of it is this, but there are some smaller amounts here. So for the mass number, what they do is they calculate the average mass out of all of these, so you're simply multiplying the percentage here by the atomic mass to get an average abundance, okay? And that's the relative atomic mass we see on the periodic table. Now, radioisotopes are isotopes. So they have same atomic number, um, different mass number, but these ones are actually radioactive, okay? So they have half-lives. That's what's called the amount of time it takes for half of the element to decay. Okay, they're often used in medicines. We can detect the radiation they emit. So these are some of the different ones. So cobalt 60 is used in as radiation therapy. Carbon 14 is um, monitor metabolism for patients with diabetes, gout, and anemia. We can also use um, carbon for carbon dating in plants and um, fossils and things like that because the rate we know the rate at which it decays. So we can look at how much is left, how much there would have been, and how old it is. Okay. Uh, here are some other ones as well. There's sodium-24, which is used to study blood circulation, and thallium, technetium. So there's lots of different radioisotopes which are used in medicine for various different reasons, okay? Um, but they all have the same thing in common in that they have a different number of neutrons than they would normally. They are radioactive, and because they get off ra give off radiation, we can detect that and use them in medicine. All right, so I'm going to stop this video here. Um, hopefully this one's been, um, again, fairly straightforward. Uh, the, probably one of the biggest things that people struggle getting their head around is the calculation of why we have um, mass numbers that are not whole numbers, and this is because it's an average of all the different isotopes of a particular element. But the main thing to get out of this is that the mass number here tells us the number of protons in the nucleus, okay, it also tells us the number of electrons in the neutral nucleus, uh, a neutral atom, I should say. And here, the mass number, when you take away the atomic number from the mass number, that tells you the number of neutrons. And you can relate all of that to the structure of an atom here with a nucleus in the middle with a proton and neutrons, which both have a relative mass of 1, surrounded by electron shells with a relative mass of 1 over 1,840. All right, hope this has been helpful. See you in the next video. Thanks, guys.